And that's just the, the if you will, the, the optics of this disease, right? Because there's also psoriatic arthritis that you've got to throw into this mix. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the incidence of that, all comers with, psoriasis, with psoriasis? Yes, so all comers, it's about 10% uh, of all patients with psoriasis will develop psoriatic arthritis, but that frequency increases the more significant your skin disease is. So as your disease gets you know, more extensive on the skin, the odds of developing psoriatic arthritis increase as well. Uh, roughly 30 to 40% of people who have more severe psoriasis based on body surface area will develop psoriatic arthritis. But one of our challenges in the clinic is that the correlation between how bad your skin disease is and how bad your joint disease is is very, actually pretty weak. And so people who have very minor or mild skin disease with very severe joint disease that can be disabling. Um, and that's often the case uh, because in the general population, most people tend to have more mild skin disease. I'll tell you, some of the scariest x-rays I've ever seen are the people with psoriatic arthritis. Yeah. Before we delve too deeply into the arthritis, I don't think we should leave um, people watching this or an insurer, God forbid, with the <laughs> idea that the skin involvement is an optical or a cosmetic issue. Now, that is far from the case. Okay. The, the disease itches, it hurts, it's socially disabling. Right. Um, the skin, even without the arthritis, the skin disease is a bad thing to have. No, I didn't mean to say it wasn't. And in fact, isn't that one of the problems with dermatology as a specialty? People say, oh, it's just, it's just dermatology, you know. And, uh, but it's not. This is a real disabling disease. Yes, and, and I, I think even dermatologists under us, I think it's really, really great for doctors to be sick every now and then. And so to understand what your patients are going through, I look at psoriasis all day, you know, and I, I think nothing of it. If I get just a little irritation in my axilla, in my armpit, I'm like, oh, man, this is really annoying. Yeah. And uh, try a little poison ivy for a weekend. That, right? yeah. Because that's how our patients often feel for life. Been and there, I, I, done yeah, that. Yeah, and I'm yeah. really glad Steve expanded this point. I mean, the, the patients complain of, of pain, burning in the skin, cracking the skin, uh, bleeding skin. So, you know, they're wearing a white shirt that we speckle with blood oh uh, underneath, their, uh, underneath their shirt. Uh, and patients who have more extensive psoriasis where they've put on a lot of you know, topical cream to try and control the scaling, they may spend an hour or more a day just trying to manage the signs and symptoms of their disease, mm -hmm. which is an enormous burden for people. You know, it's, it's interesting what you say. Everything is an objective problem that you can objectify as a doctor. This is this, 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 until it's you or in my case with smaller kids, until it's my kid. Mm -hmm. I'm great until my kid gets a hangnail, and then my God, the sky is falling. Yeah. It's, it's a very interesting and important point, point well taken. Now, we did start this broadcast by talking about two things. One is psoriasis and one is metabolic syndrome. And I must tell you that in researching this broadcast today, when I began, I was unaware of this relationship. So why don't we start by defining metabolic syndrome and then going on to this relationship. Yeah, so I, first of all, I think this is a really good topic, and I think it's, it's fascinating that you're sort of new to it as well, right. even though there's been a lot of research in this area and shows how necessary these discussions are to educate our peers about it. A, a metabolic syndrome essentially is a constellation of uh, cardiovascular type risk factors, uh, dis, uh, insulin resistance, dyslipidemia, essential obesity, things of that nature. Um, now, more broadly speaking, uh, psoriasis is a Th1, Th17 inflammatory disease. We know those inflammatory pathways tend to uh, be shared by cardiometabolic conditions okay. uh, that can promote insulin resistance, promote atherosclerotic disease. And so what the research has shown over the last two decades is that if you have psoriasis, uh, you're more likely to develop things like metabolic syndrome, diabetes, and then major cardiovascular events leading to premature mortality. Yeah. This is especially the case people have more extensive disease. The worse your disease is, uh, the stronger the relationship is of these outcomes. All right, look, let, let's, let's I, I, I can tell you I know what our viewers were thinking. So I will express it for them, which is there's a lot of metabolic syndrome out there, mm -hmm. people in America. And there's a lot of metabolic syndrome based on our diet, lack of activity. Couldn't it just be that when you get severe psoriasis and you don't move well and you're sedate, that's just coincidence. Yeah. Is there really some and that's So there's a couple pieces of information we have that uh, that lead us away from that hypothesis. So one is, some of this is large epidemiological studies where we can control for risk factors. So you can show that people with psoriasis are more likely to develop diabetes independent of their body mass index 
and at higher rates than people with, say, rheumatoid arthritis. So okay. you can sort of do some controlled mm -hmm. studies in that way. Uh, interestingly, there's been some recent um, Mendelian randomization genetic type studies uh, showing that the genetics of obesity seem to be causally related to developing psoriasis. Really? And that suggests sort of a causal relation between the two uh, disease states. So we're talking about TH1, TH17 again, that's with correct. which they overlap and share? That's right. And then the other thing that's really interesting is some mouse models of psoriasis, where if you take a mouse and you give it psoriasis just in its skin, these mice eventually develop um, metabolic disorders, essentially aortic diseases, uh, thrombosis. Thing. The association is uh, teasing it out is complicated because if you have horrible psoriasis, especially if your joints are hurting, you may be more sedentary. Uh, well, if you feel living. socially disabled by having these lesions all over you, you may be less likely to go to the pool or the gym. Sure. Uh, you may sit at home depressed, uh, watching television, eating potato chips, drinking beer, maybe smoking with the third hand. I mean, so on the one hand, it, I think it's become clear there are these genetic components that lead these, but it, there may be behavioral. It's not binary, is what yeah. you're saying. And you, you told me that in order, in order to control for this, there were some other genetically mediated diseases which, in fact, affect mobility, yeah. such as rheumatoid arthritis. Well, I think, so first of all, it's, it's always hard to establish pure causal relationships uh, in these type of studies, right? And I think what Steve's point is, is really important is that these things are multifactorial, right? And which means it has to be a multifactorial plan to deal with uh, these associations that we see in terms of bettering people's health.